people like me. You need people like me so you can point your f***ing fingers and say that's the bad guy. That's the bad guy. Okay, we'll start with this. Unbeaten up and comer Ryan Gersha took to social media as it appears that his ongoing set of negotiations with Gervonta Davis has hit a snag. And young Ryan says, I want to fight Tank and Tank wants to fight me. This fight is what boxing needs right now. I accepted all the terms on my side and instructed my team to get it done exactly as often. The fans deserve this fight. Our sport needs this fight. We gotta get this bullshit figured out. This should have been the best couple of months in boxing. Spence versus Crawford fell apart. Me and Tank running into issues. That's not what boxing is supposed to be about. Respectfully, celebrity boxing should not be defining our sport. Simple question. If this year comes and goes and Ryan Garcia and Javante Davis don't fight, would you really be surprised? You'd be surprised if this fight don't materialize before this year is up, because from where I'm sitting... I wasn't actually expecting it to materialize. Would have been nice if it did, but I wasn't holding my breath. Ryan Garcia continued, Everyone talks about player empowerment in the NBA and other sports leagues. It's time to have a real conversation about player empowerment in pro boxing. I want this fight for my career and real talk, my mental health. The guys in charge can make this fight happen. Don't let this break down. I'm asking on behalf of everyone who loves the most beautiful sport in the world. While negotiations between Ryan Garcia and Javante Davis hit a snag, the show goes on. The show goes on at Lightweight. In the time it's taking Ryan and Javante to do one fight with each other, in the time it's taking to do that, Devin Haney has already fought, beat George Cambosos two times. He's already seen himself become his division's undisputed champion. In the time that it's taking Ryan and Javante to get it together, Vasil Lomachenko is back, and he's set to be returning to action this weekend, en route to a potential Devin Haney fight or a potential Shakur Stevenson fight. All of this is happening. It's all happening in the time it's taking Javante and Ryan to do one fight, just one fight. Veteran boxing scribe Steve Kim says, the common denominator exists in these fights not taking place. This fight between Ryan Garcia and Gervonta Davis, the other fight at welterweight between Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence Jr. The common denominator in both sets of negotiations is Al Heyman. Both of those sets of negotiations, Al Heyman is involved. Many believe that the reason these fights aren't happening, what's at the heart, heart, heart of the matter, heart, the source of the problem, source is Al Heyman, because whenever he's involved, fights don't happen. Well, it's been that way for years, but I think a lot of people have finally started to notice. Boxing insider Rick Glacier also points to Al Heyman as the cause, the root of the problem, saying, wow, Ryan Garcia versus Javante Davis isn't happening. Both wanted it. Oscar De La Hoya wanted it, as it's another fight blocked by the ultimate obstructionist, Al Heyman. And Tank knows it isn't happening. You'll see Tank likely face a very shot, 37-year-old Abner Mares. On pay-per-view, I've no doubt. Not a coincidence you got two separate super fights being negotiated at or around the same time, and both of them fall apart. It's not a coincidence that this is going on, and there's actually a common denominator. The common denominator is Al Heyman. How many years have I been telling you guys this? The saving grace and the silver lining is that even if this fight at lightweight, or super lightweight, or wherever it is they want to do it, even if it doesn't materialize, guess what? what? It's not holding up the weight class. It's not holding up the division. The alphabet titles are not being held hostage. Devin Haney has them all. Whatever Ryan and Javante can or can't make happen is irrelevant to the rest of the division. Rick Glacier added, Just in October, Spence versus Crawford, Tank versus Garcia, two big fights that didn't get made. And that's the diabolical work of the ultimate obstructionist, Al Heyman. Even the blind can see through his charades. It's not that complicated. Heyman's stopping 
big fights at an alarming rate. But why would Al Heyman want to stop all these big fights from happening? How does he benefit from that? Well, why would he want to put his flagship fighters in what are risky situations? Risky to his fighters in some degree. Risky to the other guy as well, but better still, why would Al want to put his flagship fighters in risky fights and risky situations when he can put them in more comfortable and manageable situations? Keep everything in house where he doesn't have to split the pot with anyone, where he can control the environment. I believe that Al Heyman is a control freak, a bit of a dictator. Runs a tight ship, keeps his boys on a short leash. Al Heyman's developed a reputation as an obstructionist over the years. If you're asking yourself, well, why would he want to stop these fights from happening? How does he benefit from that? Well, he gets to protect his flagship fighters and his brand. Al Heyman would rather keep Gervonta Davis in fights like a, you know, Leo Santa Cruz fight or an Isaac Cruz fight. We're hearing preliminary rumors and rumblings that Gervonta may be facing Abner Mares of all people. These are the kind of safe, controllable situations that Al Heyman wants to keep his fighter in. Oh, I understand that Javante Davis is supposed to be a Mayweather Promotions fighter, but Mayweather Promotions is just a subsidiary of the PBC. He still falls in that PBC umbrella, and Al Heyman, I mean, if you're wondering why Al Heyman would be against co-promoting a show with another promoter, uh, sharing a show with another platform, need I remind you what happened to Deontay Wilder, at the hands of Tyson Fury, when they co-promoted that show alongside Top Rank? You see how it all worked out. You see what happened. Al Heyman doesn't want that to happen again. Do you think that Al Heyman wants to run the risk of that happening again? The problem here is that Al Heyman in his own mind seems to think that he can isolate his fighters from everyone else and still be able to turn them into big box office draws, big box office stars. And that doesn't work because, well, in the case of Gervonta Davis, most of the fights people want to see him in involve other fighters, other fighters that are not with the PBC, not part of Al Heyman's umbrella. Now, you can conjure up a couple of substitutes and alternatives for the mean in between time. You can do that for a while, but eventually you're going to hit a wall. You can get this young fighter to the point to where people want to see him in certain fights, but once you fail to deliver those fights, those big fights, fights that are bigger than a Rolly Romero fight or an Isaac Cruz fight, once you fail to deliver those signature fights, those important fights, well, you put a cap on that young fighter's success. And eventually they start regressing and their career starts to stagnate. Do you think that Javante Davis has reached his full potential? Have we already seen the biggest and best fights from Javante Davis? Ryan's young. He's got time, but Javante, he's 27 going on 28. Has he peaked already? Have we already seen the best we're going to see from Javante Davis? That's the question. This Ryan Garcia fight, if it don't happen, what's the next big fight for Javante Davis? I mean, seriously. Stefan Espinoza weighed in on the whole thing, saying, Tank's side has made the offer. They have a certain view on how the network should work. If DAZN insists on being involved in a certain way, well, that may or may not kill the opportunity. I told you guys months ago that the U.S. rights for the fight, who distributes it, at minimum that's going to be an issue regardless of who specifically you want to blame. Whether or not you think it's Al Heyman's fault, or someone else's. Chalk it up to the politics of boxing. In any event, who distributes the fight and where would be a, a sticking point because the core audience for this fight really is an American audience more than a British one or a Canadian one. A German audience, an Australian audience. You ain't gotta be Rupert Murdoch to know that Showtime wants the U.S. rights to this thing and DAZN would like those rights as well. So who should get the rights for the fight? A Twitter user that goes by the name La Espicy Alcaraz asked Ryan Garcia a question, she tagged him to, she asks, are you under contract or signed to DAZN? Fighthype.com responded by saying, nope, at least that's what Oscar told me. Broadway Joel on Broadway said, but Golden Boy has a contract with DAZN, and Ryan is a Golden Boy fighter. All the aforementioned parties in this conversation raise very valid points. Is... Ryan Garcia exclusively contracted to box on the DAZN platform exclusively. Is he free to fight off platform or as a Golden Boy Promotions fighter by way of Golden Boy? Is he tied to DAZN or is he not tied to DAZN? How does it work? How does it break down? And what about Gervonta? 
Gervonta Davis, not but a few days ago, said that he's a promotional free agent. He said that. So at what point do we start holding him accountable to his word? Because if he is a network and promotional free agent, the way he says it is, floating over to DAZN to do the fight. He's the one who's been saying he's a free agent. He said that. So if he's a free agent going to DAZN to do the fight, DAZN, who can easily bankroll this thing, shouldn't be a problem, shouldn't be an issue. Ryan Garcia isn't a promotional free agent, you understand. He is a Golden Boy Promotions fighter. When he fights, he fights under the Golden Boy Promotions banner. Whereas, according to Gervonta, he isn't a Mayweather Promotions fighter any longer. So I'll tell you what I think, I'll tell you what I think. I told you guys weeks ago. I told you guys months ago. I don't believe this fight happens at the end of the year. If they can get it over the line, then great. If they can actually do it and bring the fight into fruition, fan-fucking-tastic. But from where I was sitting, the fight seemed riddled with problems. Everybody can't get what they want. There's too many fingers in this pie. The only way you can work this thing out, the only way you can do it, is if the zone concedes the U.S. rights to Showtime and distributes the fight everywhere else because the zone is a global streaming platform showtime is not the way i see it the only way you can do this thing to where everybody can get a piece of the pie you give showtime the u.s rights to the fight but you retain the rights in canada and south america these markets that you might cater to you bill it as a pay-per-view there you bill it as a pay-per-view in these markets maybe you bill it as a transatlantic pay-per-view as well at a reduced price of course because the price point for a pay-per-view in the united kingdom is not akin to the price point for a pay-per-view in the united states you distribute this fight in these foreign markets abroad you distribute you sell it in europe you sell it in australia in new zealand you sell it in all these other foreign territories that Showtime as a network doesn't cater to because Showtime is not a global streaming platform. They are a U.S.-based domestic premium cable network. Nothing more. I feel like that's the only way you can get this fight over the line to where everybody can get something out of it. I'm just bouncing ideas around. But perhaps that idea has already been pitched and the people at Showtime and Mayweather Promotions, they're not keen on that idea because they want to be able to auction off the foreign rights to the fight. Their discretion. You will notice that Stefan Espinoza said the offer came from the Davis people. What if they look at this entire situation as it's our show and we reserve the right to auction off the rights to it, foreign rights, at our discretion? That is one of several possible problems this fight is facing. And that's just me bouncing ideas around because I've been telling you, I've been telling you from the very beginning, this fight's got too many problems. Not everybody can get what they want. If somebody's dissatisfied, a deal don't get reached. A deal don't happen. Now, who does it hurt more if this fight doesn't take place? Golden Boy or Mayweather Promotions? Showtime or DAZN? I'd say it hurts Showtime more. Because you tell me, what blockbuster fights has Showtime put on in the last 12 months? This entire calendar year, what major events have happened on Showtime? Think about it and compare Showtime's calendar year, calendar year so far, to DAZN's. On DAZN, you've seen Canelo Alvarez at least two times this year alone. The biggest draw in boxing in this country. You've also seen megastar Anthony Joshua and his rematch with Alexander Usyk. You saw that. You saw the biggest fight in women's boxing, Katie Taylor versus Amanda Serrano. The schedule you've been getting by way of DAZN is a more comprehensive schedule of fights that get more attention than anything you've seen on Showtime. And they're not even done. You still have Bivol versus Ramirez. You still have Chocolatito versus Estrada 3. You tell me, what fight on Showtime's calendar? What remains of their calendar year? What fight do they have coming up that you're looking forward to? What fight did they put on on Showtime at any point this year that was on the same scale as Canelo versus Bivol or Canelo versus Golovkin 3, Joshua versus Yusuf? What fight? From where I'm sitting, if this fight doesn't happen, it hurts Showtime more than it hurts Zone. Uh, Ryan Garcia is younger than Gervonta Davis. He's got plenty of time. Plenty of time to have other fights with other fighters. The DAZN platform has shelled out a more comprehensive schedule of fights, a better catalog of fights this entire calendar year than Showtime. All Showtime has done this year was fail to deliver Davis versus Garcia and fail to deliver Crawford versus Spence. That's it. The biggest fight Showtime has put on this entire calendar year has to be the Charlo versus Castaño rematch for Undisputed at 154 pounds, but that was many months ago and... Even that fight, as good as it was, it wasn't on the scale of Canelo versus Bivol or Canelo versus Golovkin. It just wasn't. It's not the same kind of fight. Not the same size fight, not the same money. So from where I'm sitting, Showtime needs this fight to happen for them more than DAZN. 
DAZN has other fights they can put on, but Showtime, Showtime needs this. In the event they don't get it, in the event it doesn't happen, what will Showtime opt to do? Well, some people are of the opinion that the people at Showtime and the PBC will then decide to revisit the Gervonta Davis versus Abner Mares fight. A fight that was supposed to have gone down a long time ago. I've been hearing about this fight as far back as 2018. It was supposed to go down... <laughs> Well, over a year ago, about two, maybe three years ago. And Abner Mares, you know, he suffered an injury to his retina that sidetracked him for a while. He was out for a little over three, close to four years. Returned to action this past September against Miguel Flores. It was on the undercard of Andy Ruiz versus Luis Ortiz at pay-per-view. And Abner actually looked okay for the first three rounds, for the first three or four rounds. And he just kind of faded after that. Fought Miguel Flores to a majority draw and you figure that if they're getting this guy out of cryo sleep if they thaw him out it's got to be for a reason it's got to be for something yeah you know if they're putting him out there giving them a fight they're fattening him up for somebody yeah presumably Gervonta davis they'd likely build davis versus mares as a box office fight a pay-per-view all his fights are pay-per-view now Gervonta's. even if most people feel they're not actually pay-per-view worthy these are not fights worthy of being billed as box office fights in all likelihood that's what they do and, you know, Abner Mahrez is basically a guy who's had one fight in the last four years. Should you have to pay box office prices to see Gervonta fight a guy like that? That's the question. There's a feeling that things having fallen apart with Ryan, this is what they will resort to because, well, Abner Mahrez does have more of a profile than a Michelle Rivera. Ryo got Ryo'd in his last fight. That unbeaten up-and-comer that they were grooming at lightweight, he got beat. He got knocked out. Abner Mahrez, his last fight was a lightweight contest. Both boys weighed in at just a little over 134 pounds. Their options for Gervonta at lightweight, you know that well, it's starting to run dry. Do a Mares fight in the hopes that you can galvanize the Chicano fans to show up and show out and show support for Abner Mares and Gervonta Tavis's fans would presumably also show up and show out, support the show, support the fight and buy it, buy it at the box office or buy a ticket to be there. That would be the hierarchy of thought if they decided to go through with this farcical fight. They don't got that many options for Javante at lightweight. They could opt to do this or try and revisit an Isaac Cruz fight. Isaac, he'd likely want more money this time, more money for a rematch. He was just a short notice opponent before standing in for Roly Romero, who was facing some legal issues. And, you know, since then, some effort has gone into raising Isaac Cruz's profile. So in a rematch, Isaac's team, they likely would want more money for a second fight. So you got an Abner Mahrez fight nobody wants. An Isaac Cruz rematch. You can reheat and repackage that thing. Or you can move Gervonta Davis back up to uh, 140 pounds, where the PBC just so happens to have at least... One unbeaten champion in that division. Talking about Alberto Puello, the newly crowned WBA super lightweight champion. That fight would be for a full-fledged alphabet title, but it is a riskier fight than a Mares fight or a Cruz rematch. I don't know. We'll see what they do.